Um, I'm Olivia Casillas. I'm from Monterrey, Nuevo León. I study in Prepa Te Compres. And my favorite teacher, well, Arturo is not my teacher, but I hope one day he'll be. <laughs> and my favorite teacher right now, because I'm still in high school, he does like college and he teaches in college. So my favorite teacher right now, I think, is my ex-physics teacher. It was pretty cool. He taught me a lot. Even though I wasn't the best in physics, I, I learned so much of him. So, yeah. And oh. I start now, or? Valeria, you are my favorite teacher <laughs> because that's what you're doing right now. Thank you. Um, I'll start sharing screen right now. Mm, here it is. Okay. Can you, do you already see the presentation? Not yet. It's just starting. Ah, okay. Now we can. Thank you. Um, I'll start in a moment. Well, I'll introduce Extreme Proteins, Inc. Thank you for having me, first of all. I'm so happy. Um, hi, I'm Olivia Casillas. I'm a senior high school student at Tecnológico de Monterrey, as I've already said. And I live in Monterrey, Mexico. Since I was a little kid, I've always been interested in all the renewable resources, ecological projects, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when I was like around 10 years old, I won a drawing competition that we needed to inspire our drawings with the flora and fauna of my country, especially the Lacandon jungle that is on Chiapas. And I won the, re the representation of my state. So the prize was to travel to Chiapas, to the Lacandon jungle. And it was amazing. It was like a life-changing experience. So since this experience contributed so much and in my interest for the for keep learning and working to build a better world and a better future in this like ecological environment. Now, a little short story. I'm convinced that things happen more than for a reason, for a purpose. Over the last month, the COVID pandemic has brought severe problems to many companies and businesses in my country and my city. Even though Monterrey is a big industrialized business thriving city, many companies have suffered from the fact that economies pretty much paralyzed. Many companies disappeared, especially a medium and smaller ones but new companies emerged and many others reinvented themselves. New businesses, models, new products and services. The company of a friend to my family was not exception. They have been eliminated with company that reoriented the special projects and specialized production. With the pandemic, not only they started to suffer from the generalized economic impacts, but also indirectly. Rising unemployment and underemployment started to bring conditions ideal for all sorts of crime. This company was not exception. During the past two years, it has been hit by people breaking into its warehouses to steal what could be scavenged, hardware, tools, materials, basically common robbery. But this kind of events do disrupt the day-to-day -day operation of a business. One of the vandalism events events um, was a robbery attempt that resulted in a fire in one of the main warehouses, which not only damaged the building and infrastructure, but brought a panic and risk to the neighbor boring places. The company decided and was forced to close that, bus that business branch until it could recover from the blows from crime. Um, now, big challenge 
bring great opportunities. Our societies face big and serious challenges. I have always been interested in building a better world through sustainability development. The UN's SDGs focus on our society's big challenges. I live in Monterrey, but I have relatives in other parts of my country, and Mexico is a very diverse country. So diverse that the lifestyles, cultural aspects, and problems are entirely different from one region to another. One of these differences is regarding nutrition. And food and nutrition is related to several of the SDGs, so I really feel there's calling for me here. Mm, so now, proteínas extremas. Food quality and availability is one of the most important aspects SDGs are related to. And one of the things that really keeps me concerned, especially as I can see in a diverse and contrasting country like Mexico, protein intake and availability, as well as vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants are fundamental in food. Extreme Proteins Inc. is a project through which we will find ways to produce high protein, highly nutritious, full alternatives while trying to make this production efficient with low environmental impact and feasible business model. The growing, pro the growing population requires growing food production. So here, disrupting protein sources, the traditional protein sources in Monterrey normally are like meat and poultry products, dairy products, fish products, vegetable proteins. Large scale and industrialized food production, especially animal productions, have high energy and water needs, therefore high production, distribution, and storage needs and costs. In other states in Mexico, like Chiapas and Oaxaca and some others, protein ingredients are very different. So here, bugs and mushrooms are excellent protein and nutrient sources. And even though they are common in many places, they are in others. They grow very fast, need little resources, and actually may be used to build nutrient cycling process and circular economy. So look, this is the one Lion's King quote that I like, which says, one person's grub is another person's candy. And it's actually true. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, an empty warehouse. We have been rented a 750 square meter with existing racks and basic infrastructure. The main goal is to use this warehouse to start off with producing mushrooms, edible insects, and edible worms. The technology to maintain is being developed as open source. It is based on Arduino and ESP32 microcontrollers using tray and air temperature, humidity, and CO2 sensors, relays control heating elements, and fan blowers. Overview on how it will be done. The production chambers are separated into two sections, measurement production and insect and work production. The racks used to store plywood and laminated boards directly provide structure. Trays that support substrate and production bed are made with wood boards and nylon mesh, so they are very simple to build and repair. Substrate for mushroom is prepared with base of wood, sawdust from the company's operation mixed with organic food wastes and manure. Substrate for edible worm production is based on fruit and vegetable waste, resulting compost is useful too. Edible insect crickets, grass copers, are fed using production leftovers from neighborhood bakery that includes crumbs, bread, oat, and organic wastes from kitchen. So far, a pilot prototype plan has been tested, but we are looking to find sustainable ways to keep the model running and scale it. Simple is beautiful. One of the things our model aims to implement is to build simple, sustainable operating processes. This is what we have found. By making measurements and tests, we made a regression model that decreases sensor using to a small number. We found that logarithmic model did a good job to predict production bed our area conditions. So using only four to six sensors can give us enough information instead for using dozens. 
The sawdust waste of the company's operation is valuable raw material. The food waste from neighbors is a valuable resource. Hiring collaboration for resource collection and produce distribution with an attractive sales share. Actually, the company's owner found who were responsible for one of the vandalism events I told you at first. Stole goods will not be recovered and the judicial processes was complicated. Retaliation for legal actions was feared. They approached them and invited to collaborate with our project. They will be in charge of collecting substrate raw materials and eventually distributing production. There is a produce market under 10 kilometers away. Now, edible bugs and worms. Edible bugs and worms can be eaten directly and there are many ways to prepare them. They're quite palatable, if not delicious. They can also be used to mix with livestock and kitchen feeding meals, also reduces meat production and carbon footprint. So the hurdles to jump, edible insects and worms are not easily seen as common food sources. Kids won't even eat their broccoli, so it will be kind of harsh. But we have this part of the project that is Extreme Proteins Inc. Education Program, making the system open source and scalable promotes a development community, also food production systems, brings STEM education potential. Wait. Sorry. Um, we want to develop a STEM program for young students and implement it online and with some schools. Actually, the school I used to go to is very interested and it will be great to come back as an instructor. My mentor shared with me that Dr. Cristina Michelini presented in the Invent Future Global Food Challenge, her work related to worm and bug farming. I was inspired by her. Actually, I talked to our team and want to speak with Dr. Michelini and seek to become partners and collaborators. I wonder if the gift team can help me do that. So, yeah. And there is obviously more to come. Our test runs have been very promising. Soon enough, I hope to be able to share actual data and images and even share with everyone a link to enter a webcam to see the Extreme Proteins Chamber in action. So thank you so much. It was an amazing opportunity. Wow. Larry, that was incredible, I, except there's only one problem. I'm really annoyed that you lied to us because <laughs> you said you were a high school student and nobody here believes that. Um, <laughs> Why? There's no way. There's no way you are a high school student. <laughs> well, so, I'm a senior way student. Way too much knowledge and confidence and competence. You know exactly what you're talking about. Bravo. Yeah. Well, I tried to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, actually, I've known Valeria for several years. I mean, she's really enthusiastic, really talented. And I know that when, when, when she gets like to a goal, she, she, she will make that happen. As, as that story that, that she told when she was like about 10 years old, I mean, it was amazing, you know, like becoming, uh, becoming like the representative of your state at this kind of national contest that had to do with arts and science and the environment. Even like ever since she was, she's been a little kid. I mean, she's been like doing this, these things. And uh, well, I hope she can convince us all that eating worms and bugs uh, is, it not <laughs> tastes like chicken, but it, it tastes good. Yeah. I've eaten so, tacos with grasshoppers and it's actually not that bad. It tastes good. So full disclosure, Valeria, I just had rice and beans with cheddar cheese, cilantro, and cricket flour. Oh, yes. it, it sounds good. I process insects. I just replaced salt with cricket flour. Wow. 90% protein, nice and salty because the salt is built into the chitin. I am very closely following what you are doing because I'm going to model what you do, and I want to become someone who, uh, Jake, what's the, the franchise 
I want to franchise <laughs> your idea because oh you're going to own the world. Because people are afraid of this, but it's 90% protein, 8% yeah. water, and 3% bacteria. Dehydrate it, you're done. I'm totally on board with this. Completely on board with this. Thank and you. And so here at Mezzicello, which is behind me, I use Easy Bake Ovens. Do you know Easy Bake Oven? No, I don't. It's a toy oven, literally this big, with a 100 watt... Um, 100 watt light bulb, incandescent, and it evaporates the water out of the carcass. And then I put that into a blender, cricket flour. Wow. I like your idea. 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 Se llaman hornos mágicos. We uh, call it like uh, magic ovens here. Uh, ah, ovens. creo que mi mamá tenía uno. Yeah. I think my mom did have one of those. So I have 15. Oh, okay. <laughs> an entire collection of magic ovens. I'm not allowed to cook the crickets in the house. Wow. So you're no. going to be like a... ¿Cómo se dice, tío? Este, cliente frecuente. Oh, a lot, like a frequent customer to a product. Yeah, frequent customer. A <laughs> regular customer. See, see, see. But your idea of a warehouse dedicated specifically to processing is where I need to be. Brilliant. Thank you Brilliant. so much. Protein, esta protein. Natura, she doesn't care. Protein <laughs> is protein. Yeah. Very good. That was excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions for, for her though? Um, do you? I do. So you started this story, and I apologize, my Spanish is abysmal, but you started the story about crime, burglary. Uh, yeah. um, uh, what was the word you used? Um, vandalism. Vandalism, vandalism. Yeah. So it started with that, and you had the idea of augmenting your income because businesses disappeared. Yeah. So what's your next step? Are you looking for funding? Well, um, we do actually. Like the, all this problem with the vandalism was like an opportunity to start this project. So yeah. So how will I donate to you? Oh, <laughs> well, um. <laughs> serious, I'm, I'm dead not, serious. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, I, would need I to think talk. we could talk about it, Valeria. Yes. And uh, I mean, uh, and this is one of the of the great things about the Global Innovation Field Trip, that it does all of this awesome networking with people that are like uh, innovators, inventors, business people. Uh, I mean, this networking, I mean, and, and this is why 24 hours around the globe is such a great opportunity because you get to like share with people that you were not aware that we're doing things that could help us each other. Jim actually like the, uh, his, his facility, the Mezcatello uh, um, is, is a sustainable facility that is very, wow. very much like related to your project. So I think we should, yeah, we should continue to communicate Jim and definitely. And more importantly, Valeria, how can I donate to you and how can I convince others to donate to you as well? because I have friends around the world. And Victor Hugo once said, this is an idea whose time has come. And here you are talking to YouTube in 19 countries around the world. Yes, this needs to happen. Yeah. And I want to help you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, you're, 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 you're certainly right. And you know what? She also mentioned something, uh, Jake. Uh, when, I, when I shared to her, uh, because I have to reveal that uh, somehow I'm 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 working with uh, on her project. I know through chats. <laughs> you know um, this woman? Oh my god! <laughs> uh, she she she. I shared to her like uh, Christina Michelini's work, and yeah, uh, and that's amazing. what she was like. Oh, this this is great. It's actually like she's done like much of the of the part of the STEM education that we want to do. So uh, she wants to get in contact with Christina. Uh, and maybe partner with her and uh, why not perhaps she's going to be also distributor of of the hive uh, project here in latin america why not 
Exciting. So maybe you could help us like get Valeria in contact with Christina. Oh, you don't know you don't know how to reach her? Well, I have her contact, but um maybe if you could like just back Valeria's Valeria, Valeria, here's the problem. Um, I'm gonna not remember this conversation, okay? Because I'm always I will. doing a lot of stuff. But Valeria, if you email me after this is over and say, please set up a meeting and I will set up a Zoom meeting and introduce you to each other. I'll be glad to do that. Oh my God, okay, thank you so much. Great, thank you. Valeria, you are a hero to me. You are speaking the language I want to speak, but you're doing it much better than I am. <laughs> Jim, Jim she's, also, she, she's also a lot younger than you too, so she's got a lot of things in her favor. <laughs> <laughs> Brava, brava, señor, señorita, brava. Uh, we have a new person here. I, 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 Bailene, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce you. So, oh my God. Please, please introduce yourself and uh, you tell them where you're from and what you're doing and who you are. Valeria, don't go away. <laughs> She's back. Uh, you're muted, Bailene. Sorry. Okay. Hi, this is Belen Lozano. I, I come from Spain and I live in Alicante in the south in the Mediterranean coast. I, I'm a lecturer at the University of Valencia where I teach mostly um, German language and literature and translation. That's good. Um, I'm very happy to be here yeah, with good. you. That sounded fantastic, Valeria. <laughs> So for Valeria, when you have your PhD thesis, okay, and you want to get it translated into different languages, Baylin uh, can do that for you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yes. That would be a pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. So focus and PhD is waiting for you. <laughs> thank you. Very good. Thank you, Valeria. Thank you. Thank you very much.